you have been watching my video for a while, you might remember that in my release tier list, Necrologist was ranked extremely low. However, in my newest tier list, she was the only 5 star that was ranked in tier 0.5. So, what has changed? Hi, this is StainBanX, welcome to another Reverse 1999 video. Today, I'm going to be talking about what pushes Necrologist to become the best 5 star in this game and how to actually use her. So why was Necrologist considered bad in the first place? Well, at the beginning of the game, with the exception of very few battles, the vast majority of the fights were with 3 on-field units and 1 backup unit. This means you can only deploy 3 units on field with 3 action per turn. With action being so scarce at the time, to be considered viable, a support unit must be able to provide strong utility with low number of actions. For Corn Bloom and Baby Blue, they can apply AoE debuff with one action every two to three turns. Characters like Pickles and Regulus have strong damage themselves and have powerful moxie generation passive that allows them to gain more moxie per action. Comparatively, let's look at Necrologist's kit. She's not that great as a DPS, both of her skills have lost of multiplier in exchange for more utility, especially in the higher ranks. Her ultimate on the other hand is pretty great as a support skill. It gives the entire team except herself a one-use revive that doesn't stack. Additionally, it also provides 30 to 50% damage bonus depends on the portrait for 3 turns. On top of that, it can also double as a healing skill if the revive buff already exists on the teammate. The issue is getting the required 5 moxies, and she does not have any way to generate bonus moxie from her actions. And we ain't gonna give her the action when we have so many other options that, albeit a little less powerful as a whole, cost less action and will cover through the entire fight. However, as the game began to mature, it's now very clear that the vast majority of the endgame content will be for on-field fights. The bonus action point makes Necrologist being ultimate reliant much less of an issue. Plus, the ultimate buff will now cover 11 actions instead of 8, making it more valuable. Now, that alone would not have been enough to actually push her all the way to the top. What really pushed her all the way to the top is the new content that just released in Global, Main's Bulletin. Reviving is already very useful since survivability is actually a huge issue for some of the raids, but the up to 50% damage boost from her ultimate is what truly makes her shine unlike any other in this game. This damage bonus does two things. First, it greatly increases the possible burst from one attack. With each HP bar depleted, the boss will gain 20% damage reduction, and the more damage you do with your last attack on that HP bar, the more damage reduction you will avoid from the next HP bar. This damage bonus is even more impactful to the later rank of the raid. To truly understand just how good it is, we need to unpack the game's damage formula a bit. For now Genesis damage in Reverse 1999, there are generally 5 sections of multiplier. The final attack, the skill multiplier, the corresponding might, the damage bonus, and another 30% if there is an elemental advantage. We are going to be focusing on the damage bonus part specifically for this video. Whenever you see buffs and debuffs with the wording such as damage taken, damage dealt, and damage bonus, they actually all go into damage bonus multiplier additively. The damage bonus multiplier also has a minimum, which is 30%. This lower limit is why despite having different stack of buffs, you will most likely be doing the same amount of damage in the last few HP bars, as the damage bonus multiplier has already been reduced to the minimum. And now, let's compare the effect of a 50% damage bonus depending on the number of stacks. Within the confine of SSS rank, the boss can have between 0% to 120% damage reduction. Usually, you will already be notifying some of that with your DPS character, as they can have usually up to around 20% damage bonus from the rest of it if they choose to focus on it. We are also going to account for another 20% between the character's kit, support, and their psyche. Even with that, we can see your DPS will be dealing 30% of their damage on the final bar of HP and 40% on the HP before. With a 50% damage bonus from her ultimate, the multiplier at 12 stack goes from 30% to 70%, which is a 133% damage increase. And 40 to 90, which is 125% damage increase at 10 stacks. This is often the thing that will push you to get your score from S to SS to SSS. 
Now that I've hopefully convinced you to look at your own necrologists, there are a few things you should know. First, necrologists will only be the optimal choice at P1 and above. At P0, her ultimate only provides 30% damage bonus, which you can achieve the same amount relatively consistently with Pickle or Anna Lee. So, if you have those two and your necrologist is sitting at P0, you should just go with those two instead. Another thing is that Necrologist's ultimate does not apply the prayer or the damage bonus to herself, which means she will not do much damage during the buff duration and you should look to use that action on someone else. Plus, she will only have one rewind herself per battle from her inside one in fact. When playing with her in your team, you should always look to fuse her skill when possible. This allow you to generate two moxies with just one action point. After that, you can either choose to use the skill, especially consider her skill to has a dispel and will be useful sometimes, or you can use refresh in later turns and hope the rank 2 skill goes to your carry instead. For her resonate, I highly recommend going full survivability as her damage is not that good and again, she herself cannot benefit from the damage bonus from her ultimate. As for the side cube, you can honestly just throw any side cube on her for the stats consider she's neither the DPS nor the healer. But if you really want to optimize, there are a few options. You can pick her second life for some free healing from her ultimate, or beyond Wonderland which made her extra tanky. That Inquisitive Deer also works as her ult can heal target that already have prey on them, but you will likely be using this one on a actual healer instead. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about her. Absolutely worth racing for main bulletin as long as she's P1 and above. And she's also capable of carrying Limbo with her damage bonus and revive. This has been Steam Banex. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.